Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have a shorter video coming at you. This is just about Debo Samuel and the impact of his injury for fantasy football. So if you haven't already heard, then I guess I'm breaking the news to you. He did suffer an injury this week. So to start off, I'll just tell you, he suffered what they believe to be a Jones fracture during a throwing session, and he is having surgery today. Or if you're watching this tomorrow from the perspective of when I'm recording this, just know that he is undergoing surgery on June 18th. So in case you don't know what a Jones fracture is, it's basically a fracture right where the pinky toe meets the heel. So the bone of the pinky toe is meeting the heel. That is where this injury is. And that's not the best spot at all because that's right where his toe is, right? And that's where when he gets that burst, especially because he's a speed guy, he's very fast and he gets those quick bursts, that's a part of his body that is gonna really feel the pain when he's trying to run. So for all NFL players, it's bad, but especially for Debo Samuel in this case. Now, there is some positive news though. So we're gonna take a look at this article written by Dr. Selin Parekh of the Fantasy Doctors, which I will leave a link to in the description below and by Dr. Jay Shaw. So I will leave a link to that article also in the description below so you can check it out if you'd like, along with a link to the Fantasy Doctors Twitter and YouTube account. So in this article, they studied 42 Jones fractures injuries between the 2010 to 2015 NFL seasons, and it was a pretty good sample size, right? So of those 42 Jones fractures that they studied, 15 players returned to play in less than nine weeks, and nine of them, or 60%, ended up getting re-injured. That's a pretty bad rate. However, 27 of the players returned in more than nine weeks. And of those 27 players, only four of them, or less than 15%, got re-injured. So right there, we can see nine weeks is the mark that we want to be at or have a longer time to recover because the re-injury rate drops from 60% to just 15% and actually a little less than 15%. We can also see that of those players who returned in less than nine weeks, they had an average of a 53.4% decrease in performance. That is very, very significant. However, of the players who returned in more than nine weeks, they had an average of a 9.4% increase in performance. Now, that probably is a little fluky, right? It wouldn't make sense doing better coming off of an injury. So it's more likely that those players were just in much better situations the following season or were entering their prime. So obviously don't expect Debo Samuel to be impacted in a positive way from this injury, but just don't expect it to be that negative if he waits over nine weeks to return to play. So nine weeks from now is August 20th, and the 49ers have their second preseason game on August 21st versus the Raiders at home. They also have their third preseason game at Chicago playing the Bears on August 29th. So like I said earlier, nine weeks from now is August 20th. So in theory, Debo Samuel could play in the 49ers second preseason game on August 21st and fit that category of players who waited at least nine weeks. However, it would be much safer to wait until their third preseason game on August 29th. Now, I would like to add the preseason schedule might be cut to just two games, but as of now, it's the regular four weeks for each team in preseason. So we're just going to go by that because that's what we know of as of now will be happening. So most NFL teams usually use the first and second week for preseason to test out rookies and test out players who they're not quite sure of. Their third preseason game is where they usually use their starters quite a bit. So if he were to wait until the third preseason game, then that'd be about 10 weeks past. So that would be in the time frame of when players are going to do much better or be hindered by the injury a lot less. And I do think it'd be good if he were to return then because it's not good for Debo Samuel to just go from nothing to playing 90% of snaps in week one because that's what could re-injure him. If they ease him into it and play him a little in the third and fourth preseason game, that could be a lot better and help him reduce the risk of getting re-injured. Now, if Debo Samuel misses time, because it certainly 
is a very good possibility if that were to happen both Raheem Mostert and Tevin Coleman are going to benefit right especially Mostert since he is the primary runner on this team and he could also see a solid increase in targets that's the one thing that we really want to see out of Raheem Mostert being more involved in the passing game and if Debo Samuel is gone not only will he get a lot more rushing attempts but he should get some additional targets as well now it does help Tevin Coleman as well because he should be getting a few more carries and maybe one or two more targets, but Raheem Mostert is going to be benefiting a lot more from Debo Samuel being out than Tevin Coleman will be. Also, the 49ers start the season playing the Cardinals, Jets, and Giants. So if Debo Samuel maybe doesn't re-injure himself, because if he has the same injury, then he's going to be out for probably the whole season. But if he has another injury or if his recovery is just not going that well, and misses a few games, just remember that the 49ers start the season playing the Cardinals, Jets, and Giants. All of those are pretty bad teams, and some of them actually have solid offenses, so this could be a pretty high-scoring game, and the 49ers are going to run the ball a lot. Very good for Raheem Mostert. Also, George Kittle, the main target in this offense, even with Debo Samuel in. The 49ers still like to run it a lot, so no team can just focus on George Kittle if Debo Samuel's gone, right? Raheem Mostert is a threat in this offense. But when the 49ers do throw the ball, George Kittle was, will certainly be the top option more than ever. And even if a team does focus on Kittle a ton, this is the reason why big and fast tight ends are becoming so popular in today's game. No matter how many people guard him, it's hard for them to stop him. Because at 6'4", 247, with a 4'5", 240 yard dash time, he's the size of a linebacker, but as fast as cornerback and safeties. No one is the perfect fit to guard him. No one has all the tools needed to guard him. They have to double team him, and even if they do, he's still gonna be a major threat. George Kittle could easily average 12 to 15 targets for the first few weeks of the season if Debo Samuel's gone, because not only is he gone, but also the third most targeted player on the 49ers last season, Emmanuel Sanders, is also gone. And there are some rookies on this team who are not going to start out the season getting six or seven targets, right? That's just not going to happen with rookies. Now, there's also another player who I'd really like to talk about because his fantasy football status for this year could be very well impacted if Debo Samuel has some time out. So Kendrick Bourne has a lot riding on this, right? Of course, he doesn't want Debo Samuel to be gone, but for fantasy football, Kendrick Bourne could do very well if Debo Samuel's gone. So it is between Kendrick Bourne and Jalen Hurd, I think, to be the wide receiver one in this offense. But I expect it to be Bourne because to start the season, they know that Kendrick Bourne is a good player and he already has chemistry with Jimmy Garoppolo. But Jalen Hurd has never even played an NFL snap. Bourne also was the fourth most targeted player on the 49ers last season and the second most targeted player on the team in 2018 behind George Kittle, of course. So he has had a prominent role in this offense pretty much since his rookie season in 2017 and especially since his sophomore season in 2018. Kendrick Bourne actually looked pretty good and promising. So he turned six red zone targets into five touchdowns last season. He was very good in the red zone and overall, but especially in the red zone where it matters most. He also had, as we can see here on Player Profiler, which I will leave a link to in the description below, we can see that with an 88.2% true catch rate, that ranked 15th in the NFL amongst receivers. That's very, very good, especially for someone who we didn't even expect to have a chance at being the wide receiver one in this offense. He was also ranked 14th in fantasy points per target. Once again, that is very, very good, especially for fantasy football. He also ranked 21st in quarterback rating when targeted, so Jimmy Garoppolo benefited a lot when he was targeting Kendrick Bourne last season. We can see here that Kendrick Bourne is very good and capable in this offense. He also has chemistry with Jimmy G. He was there when Garoppolo arrived in 2017, and in his last three games in 2017, he saw six, five, and five targets. Jimmy Garoppolo was throwing a pretty good amount of balls his way for the last few games of his first season in San Francisco. He also saw two, three, and one red zone targets in those games, those last three games in 2017. 
So Jimmy Garoppolo is completely comfortable throwing him the ball in the red zone. And as we saw last year, he was very good in the red zone. He took six red zone targets and turned it into five touchdowns. So Kendrick Bourne has all that chemistry with Jimmy G, but Hurd has no chemistry with Jimmy G. He's never played a single snap with him. Not only that, but he's never even played a snap in the NFL. We have no clue how good he's going to be. He's also coming off of a serious injury that held him out of his entire rookie campaign in 2019. It was a stress fracture in his back, so we don't know how much that's going to affect him this year. There are a lot of concerns about him. There's also another player who could benefit tremendously for fantasy football if Debo Samuel is out, and that is rookie Brandon Ayuk. So Brandon Ayuk was drafted 25th overall in this 2020 draft. So the 49ers clearly want to use him, right? And Brandon Ayuk is very similar to Debo Samuel, but he actually has longer arms and is more explosive. We can see here that his burst score was in the 92nd percentile. Debo Samuel's was in the 81st percentile. So when we think of Debo Samuel, we think of a fast guy with a very good burst. Well, Brandon Ayuk's burst is even better than that, and it's better by a noticeable amount. Not only that, but Brandon Ayuk is also very explosive on both legs, which is extremely valuable in the NFL. He can line up on either side of the field because whenever you line up on the right side, your right leg is going to be behind your left leg. Or whenever you're on the left side of the field, your left leg is going to be behind your right leg. That's just how it is. Whatever leg is closer to the sideline gets put behind your other leg. So that means that if you're lining up on the right and then the left side of the field, you're going to have to have a live explosion going off of either leg. And Brandon Ayuk has that, and that's not something that a lot of NFL players have, especially guys at such a young age. His good explosiveness on both legs allow him to make a strong cut or jump off of either leg, which is once again very important in the NFL. Brandon Ayuk is very good in yards after catch, just like Debo Samuel. Once again, he is very comparable to Debo Samuel, and that's very important because we saw last year, Jimmy G loved throwing to Debo Samuel. Brandon Ayuk is the closest replacement on this team to Debo Samuel, and although we don't know how good he'll be in the NFL, considering that he was the 25th overall pick, we can imagine that he's probably going to be pretty good in the NFL, right? Now, I would like to say, just to wrap it up, it still is anyone's game, right? Debo Samuel hopefully won't miss any time. But even if he does, we never know who's going to be the wide receiver one in this offense. It still could be Jalen Hurd. It could be Dante Pettis. It could even be Jawan Jennings, who is a rookie drafted in the seventh round, but who has a lot of potential for sure, especially in the red zone. Any of them could break out and become the wide receiver one on this team. So make sure to pay attention in week one and week two to who plays the most snaps and who gets the most targets because oftentimes that is more important than who has the most fantasy points in a wide receiver core, especially in a unique situation like this where there's a lot of semi-unproven players and who we don't really know who the best is and also a lot of young players who haven't had much time to show their potential. So that will wrap it up, guys. I hope Debo Samuel can make a recovery as long as they guide him through the right processes and make sure that he stays up to date with working out his leg and everything. And as long as they give him adequate time to rest, hopefully 10 or even more weeks. But if they don't, just remember there is a chance he goes down. And if he does, then Raheem Mostert, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, and Kendrick Bourne are all players who I think will benefit tremendously. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Please let me know what you think of Debo Samuel. What do you think is going to happen to him? Do you think he's going to return at the beginning of the season? What do you think is going to happen to all of the other 49ers players if he goes down again or if he just doesn't start the season playing? What do you think is going to happen? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to go follow me on Twitter because I put out a lot more content over there than here. So it's definitely worth the time to go check me out there and see what content I put out on Twitter. The link to that will be in the description below. And if you enjoyed, please feel free to subscribe to me. I put out a lot of content, daily content, all stuff related to fantasy football every single day. So you guys are going to get great fantasy football content every day if you subscribe to me. And if you enjoyed it, also please drop a like. It really helps, seriously. 
I know you guys might be annoyed if YouTubers asking you to go like the video, but it seriously does help and it's a great and free way to just show your support and show that you enjoy the content that we are putting out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.